Hello, and welcome back. Um, I will be reviewing another movie today. Uh, this movie is the uh, Netflix movie that came out uh, last Friday. I'm thinking of ending things. It is based on a book of the same name by Ian Reid. And yeah, so what did I think of this movie? You know, it was different than I thought it would be, but it was still good. It was a very interesting film. The simple premise is a young woman travels with her new boyfriend to his parents' secluded farm. But the movie isn't actually about that. It's much more complex of a concept. And the movie really has nothing to do with that basic concept. Um, but other than that, which, I mean, that kind of caught me off guard when I was first watching it. I was very confused with what I was watching. And when I was finished with it, I had to think about what it was really about. The movie also can feel rather uncomfortable and unsettling at times. Not inappropriate or anything like that. It just has this strange way of getting under your skin. It just kind of feels a little unnerving, like something isn't right about this movie. This movie isn't really straightforward at all. This movie provides sort of an existential experience. It's not really the happiest movie in the world. Um, spoiler talk, I guess now, if you want to not see spoiler talk, skip to the time on screen now, okay? Um, spoiler time. Um, if you've seen this movie, you, you probably know that it's not really about a, a young woman travels with her new boyfriend to his parents' secluded farm. Like, the, the young woman's boyfriend can basically hear this woman's thoughts. This young woman's name changes multiple times throughout the movie. This young woman gets calls from people that named like Lucy and Louisa, which are both names that she is goes by in the movie. Um, there's many inconsistencies like, oh, I grew up in a house, or oh, I grew up in an apartment. Uh, pictures that like change people, different like the ages of the two main characters change a lot, and so do the ages of the parents, they change a lot. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff in this film. It's This film doesn't really show a cohesive story of a couple, but it's not supposed to, really, if you've seen the movie. It, because the truth is, this movie isn't really about what it, it says it is. The movie, it cuts to shots of um, an older gentleman uh, who is a janitor at a high school. Clear and later in the movie that this couple and his parents and all of this are just a figment of his imagination as he's thinking about everything he did in life. And that's why this movie is so mixed up and not really coherent. It's because this movie isn't really an actual thing that's taking place in reality. It's inside this person's head. And it all leads up to this finale at the end of the movie when um, the two main characters of the movie go to a high school, which is the janitor is working at. He's the janitor of that high school. Really, these two main characters don't really go to this high school. It's this janitor thinking that his younger self and one of his past girlfriends, or maybe someone that represents all of his love interests, are at this high school. And, and if you think about this movie, it's honestly really depressing. The movie really ends on an older version of the main character, Jake, who is the janitor, um, performing a musical number from Oklahoma in front of a bunch of, uh, older versions of, um, people that he knew in life. But the movie is actually about an older man who's thinking of ending his life. And even though the movie doesn't really tell us how it ends, we can assume that since that's what happened in the book, the movie ends that way. An older man, who is a janitor, relives, or, yeah, relives his past experiences and ends up killing himself. Because if this was any other movie, it might just be laid out there, like, that's how it ends. But this movie is really hidden, it's in the subtext about what it's really about. Spoiler talk is over now, and, uh, yeah. So this movie, um, throughout was very convoluted, confusing, and there's a lot of scenes that are boring. The first 20, 30 minutes of the movie were just two people talking in a car very quietly. But, 
it is a really good it is an art house film it's and it's kind of hard to understand so it's not the simplest movie to watch it's not just a movie to watch like tenet i don't think it's a movie just to watch if you're looking for a casual viewing experience it's kind of a movie that you kind of got to think about it to think and is a little unsettling and depressing so if it's not a mainstream film um but if you're into other Charlie Kaufman works, or if you like the book, or if you just want to watch something new and creative, I guess, um, it's on Netflix. Um, no harm in watching this movie. It is rather long, but it is a really well-paced and amazing movie. And yeah, I'll give this movie a 5 out of 5. I do think this movie is better than Tenet. But, uh, I'd recommend Tenet more to people that are into mainstream movies. If you want to watch, like, a big-budget action film, this movie is definitely more for people that are into, like, art house films and creative pieces of work. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.